How's it going, Eliminators? Today, we're gonna to be working on an MTD lawnmower with a Honda engine. Now, my customer brought this mower down to me because he's been having an issue with the automatic choke release mechanism. Now, he's brought it to some other places to try to get fixed, but no one's been able to fix the issue, so I'm gonna have a look at it. So let's get right into it. So today I'm working on an MTD Pro lawnmower that has a Honda engine on it. Now the reason this lawnmower was brought into me today was because my customer was having an issue with the choke mechanism, which is up here, and we'll get to that in a second, but it was taken to a local shop. They tried to fix it. You know, they cleaned and rebuilt the carburetor and my customer was saying the whole time that it had nothing to do with the carburetor and everything to do with the choke mechanism here. So Honda uses what is known as a hybrid auto choke system. Now the way that this choke system works is quite simple, even though it looks fairly complex. Basically there's an arm here that you pull back. And when you pull back on this lever here, it pushes that little arm out to engage the choke plate. Now, what happens is when you pull this choke back far enough, it's supposed to stay in the choke on position. Now, there's this little rod here that goes to this little bracket, and this little bracket is attached to this little spring, which goes down here, but there's a little arm that drops down, and what is supposed to happen is when you come up to the lever here, and you engage this lever, right? Then this lever here pulls on this right here, disengaging your flywheel brake, that's your blade brake, but it also pulls on that little rod there. Now you're gonna notice that when that rod is pulling, it's pulling back to, I'm gonna try to get a shot, right to about there and it's not lifting up this little lever system. And when that rod pulls back, it is supposed to lift up on that little arm right there. And that is supposed to release this system here. And then the spring tension is supposed to automatically pull that back just like that and take your choke off. So I have another Honda here, and I just wanted to show you guys what the choke mechanism is supposed to look like. So we're going to put the choke on, and then we're gonna pull the handle, and the choke mechanism releases just like that. So you guys can see that this one doesn't bend up all that much either, but it bent up just enough to allow the release of this handle. So it's known as kind of like an hybrid auto choke system where it's manual engagement, but it's automatic release. So what is the issue? Well, again, the issue is that, you know, if my customer pulls it to here, it goes back just fine, right? He says, as soon as you pass a certain point, and I want you to listen to this, right there. See how we're getting caught up on that little edge? I'll try to zoom in. And you can see where it's been grinding that plastic. So I'm not sure if that's proper, but what I do know right off the bat is that this little rod isn't pulling back far enough. So we're gonna try to adjust that. So once I adjust that rod and get this to pull back far enough, and I'm happy with that, then I can shift my focus down to why this is sticking up. So to start off here, to get this little arm here to lift up more, we could do one of two things. I could go to this cable and unthread it so that there's more length on the cable conduit, which would then tension this cable here, which would pull the blade brake back farther and thus pull this rod back farther. However, this rod can be bent right here, can be bent in a bit to shorten it, and then I don't have to put extra tension on this cable because I can already feel this cable has a lot of tension on it. And I really dislike these designs. Normally what I do is you'll see me selling a used mower and I'll push that back down in and I'll try to wrap that with some kind of electrical tape or zip ties or something to try to get it to hold down flat like that. Because I have a feeling that if I apply any more tension to that cable, it'll snap. So we're gonna pull out this rod just by rotating it that way. And then we're gonna come up here and pull this rod out at this end there. And the only thing I'm gonna to try to do here is just bend that little rod in farther because 
you know, adjusting this rod is going to be much easier than applying more tension to the cable and, like I said, possibly snapping it. So like I said, a little bit of electrical tape, and now when you pull that cable on the arm up above, it doesn't pull this out, which is going to give us the proper tension on our cable with the factory setting. And then just with that quick little bend on that rod down there, when I go ahead and pull the cable now, watch what happens here. See that? So now we're lifting up properly. You know, so another shop couldn't figure that out. Now, all I needed to do was put this little rod in a vise and just bend it with a pair of needle nose pliers. That was as simple as that. Now the speed at which that arm pulls back is affected by this spring right here. And that spring goes to that little mounting tab. But let's say you had one of these and you engage the choke and then you went up top to pull on the lever and this thing shot forward really quickly. Chances are it's just your spring right there that has too much tension on it. And you can just go ahead and put a little bit less tension and it should make it much easier to start your engine without your choke going off too fast before you can pull your recoil handle basically. So I think the best course of action here is just to simply take this plate off and remove the mechanism from the lawnmower. Then I could flip it upside down and have a look at what exactly is worn out in there. I can also see that this bolt here looks like the plate is not positioned properly and this bolt was actually just a uh, well, finger tight. So just the two 10 millimeter bolts and you can remove this bracket here. We're gonna have to go ahead and disconnect our little release mechanism rod there. And then we should be able to just remove that and then we can have a look. Okay, so I got this little choke mechanism in my vise here. First thing I'm gonna do is come up to this little tab there. That's what engages the plastic. And I'm just gonna use a little file to clean it up because it feels like it's got a couple little sharp edges which could be digging into the plastic. So, you know, again, we're just gonna go ahead and just smooth that surface out. So I have the other Honda in the shop here and I've removed the bolts. But a lot of times all of your gaskets are gonna fall down. If you guys wanna know the proper sequence of gaskets for a Honda GCV 160 engine, I do have a video showing that and I will link it in the top right of your screen. You click that link and you'll be able to get your gaskets installed properly because a lot of times when you go to reassemble these if one of the gaskets is installed improperly your lawnmower won't run properly but moving on to the choke mechanism here we can see that it looks pretty much the same so you rotate this up and it pushes that arm right here out which engages the choke and then when we let this off, normally it's your spring tension on the carburetor arm that's gonna pull that back. But what I'm looking at is that little arm right back in here, just to see what it looks like. Maybe things just need a little bit of lubrication on his. So I'm back on the engine here and I'm looking at the carburetor because we have to remember that that arm runs off of this and the spring tension of this little choke lever here is going to determine the pressure of that arm pushing up against that piece of plastic. And I want you to look at how fast this returns. The spring tension on here is absolutely crazy. So I think what's happened is whoever's worked on this previously has taken this spring and wrapped it around this post one more time to increase the pressure of this uh, I guess maybe hoping that they were gonna solve the issue, but it actually ended up making it worse. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna undo this spring and wind it back one turn so that there's less pressure on here, which will in turn put less pressure on our steel arm, which would then put less pressure up against our plastic. So hopefully things aren't binding up as much as they are at the moment. So it may not look like I've done anything here, but I can promise you that I've unwound it one turn and now, you're gonna look at, there's still enough tension on this to return the choke plate to the open position, to the run position, but it's going to put a lot less tension up against that metal arm. So one of our issues could have been that this was set a little too tight. Worst case scenario is I would just have to get a new mechanism here. And I'm gonna look up to see if I can get a price on one of these. 
because I've never actually had to replace them. Usually what happens is they get loaded full of grass and debris. And normally I can just blow them out with compressed air, go ahead and clean them in my ultrasonic cleaner to get all the gunk out of the inner sides of that gear there. And then I can just go ahead and spray them with a little bit of dry lubricant. So you don't want something that's sticky. You're gonna see all kinds of sticky lube in here, but that's just for my testing purposes, just to try to get things to uh, slide smoothly because I wanted to see what's hanging up and what's not. And I think I've identified the issue. So I ran this through my ultrasonic cleaner just to clean it up because like I said, I was using some grease to just help these little parts slip so that I could identify the issue. So once again, I'm going to use my dry lube. We're going to lubricate this up and then I will reinstall it and see if it makes a difference. And I just wanted to remind you guys that when you're lubricating Honda's automatic choke return, you want to be using a dry lubricant. So this doesn't leave any oily residue that grass or dirt can stick to. So just before I go ahead and reinstall this, I put a little bit of Permatex blue thread locker onto the bolt that was a little loose. So I'm just going to go ahead and tighten that back up. I'll go ahead and reconnect my lever here. So my bolts are tight, so I should be able to engage the choke. And then, like I said before, if there's too much tension down here, it's going to be putting too much tension on this arm here, which again is going to be putting too much tension on that guy right there, which is going to grind the plastic like the issue we were having. So now that this rod up here has been bent, if I pull on my lever up top, it will release this. And then hopefully it won't catch anymore. Now it is still catching just a little bit, but we can see that it's super slow at returning. So I'm not touching anything here. I'm just letting that go on its own. Now, normally the vibration of the engine when this is running will help return that to the choke off position, but I'm gonna have to make some adjustments here. So I finally figured it out. The issue was that where they had this spring hooked up before, like I said, there was way too much tension on this choke lever which caused too much tension on that, which then caused it to push up against the plastic too much, right? So it, it literally prevented this piece from rotating forward. So then what I thought was I'd just give this less tension. And the issue that I found was that this was returning just fine, but this choke plate wasn't returning to the open position because again, it just didn't have enough spring tension. So I decided to go with, I guess what I'm calling a half wrap. So instead of the spring coming to this position here and not giving it enough tension, but instead of going around all the way again and giving it too much tension, I've grabbed the spring and I've taken it from here and I've put it through that hole right there. So now we have choke on, and then we're going to pull our lever up top, which is going to release this, and then the arm is going to go forward and the choke is going to go into the run position. Now that will happen a little bit quicker because of the vibration of the engine, but this is going to work out perfectly now. So I'm going to put all this back together and it should, you know, theoretically choke. I can go up and pull my handle and then slowly it will take the engine off of choke on its own and my customer should be happy that the problem is solved using his original components. So I just brought this outside, everything was reassembled. I had turned the fuel valve on and the place that my customer brought this mower to before said that they cleaned and rebuilt the carburetor and unfortunately his carburetor leaks, which would explain why there was no fuel in the fuel tank. So now I gotta take this whole thing apart and pressure test his carburetor to see if the needle valve is in fact sealing. So we went ahead and pulled the carb off and once the bowl came off, we could see a bunch of debris in the bottom of the bowl. Now, the shop that had worked on this previously said to my customer that they went ahead and cleaned the carburetor, which it didn't really look like it. And we're guessing that a piece of debris from the bowl ended up going in between the seat and the needle valve and kind of held the needle valve open so that it was flooding. So now that the carburetor has been cleaned of that debris, we reinstalled the carburetor, turned the fuel line on, and the fuel is not leaking anymore. So I'll go ahead and put the choke on and we'll fire it up. And then 
then once this engine gets hot, it starts without needing the choke to be engaged. So this mower is ready to be returned back to my customer and he should be quite pleased with the service we provided. And I just wanted to let you guys know that if you had to, you could go out and buy this part as a complete assembly from either MTD or Honda. So let's say you were cutting grass and a stick pushed in there and broke something, you guys can go ahead and just buy this piece outright instead of trying to fix it yourself. I will put that part number up on screen. You guys can see it there. I think it's about $41 US, so it's not that cheap. However, if you needed it, you can go out and buy it. But that's going to be it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week. Check channel out for new content. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.